Global longitudinal strain is an important parameter that can add many crucial information to the echocardiographic exam. In fact, generally we uh, perform the evaluation of the ejection fraction during a, a TTE, a transthoracic echo, to evaluate the systolic function. However, it has been demonstrated that the global longitudinal strain is earlier than ejection fraction in the detection of left ventricular systolic dysfunction. The strain is an, um, in an evaluation of the deformation of the left ventricle. In the clinical practice, we have three types of strain, which are the longitudinal strain, the radius strain, which is perpendicular to the longitudinal one, and the circumferential strain. However, the only parameter which has been validated clinically is the longitudinal strain, and in particular, a value which is the global longitudinal strain. So, global longitudinal strain, which is GLS, is a negative value which should be more negative than minus 20% to be normal even though a real normal cutoff value has not been, uh, has not been uh, reported since there are uh, many differences between the different vendors. So we have to take in mind that our values should be uh, related to our echo machine. So GLS is uh, a value that reflects the deformation of the single segments through the analysis of the uh, apical views, in particular, obviously, two chambers view, four chambers view, and three chambers view. So there is an evaluation of the deformation of the myocardium through the longitudinal direction. So in the end, we will have a bullseye with that reflects all the segments of the last ventricle with a, a sum of these values which is the GLS, the global longitudinal strain. So which is the clinical application of global longitudinal strain? It has been demonstrated that it could be very important in some kind of patients. In fact, it has been demonstrated that it, uh, it could be uh, pathological in uh, patients with, um, with cardiovascular risk factors. In fact, there could be uh, a reduction of GLS in patients with uh, hypertension, diabetes and obesity. Since there, that could be, there could be uh, an uh, hypertrophy, which is obviously a pathological hypertrophy with a disarray of some fibro fibrosis and so on, that uh, reflects a normal, paradoxically normal ejection fraction, but a pathological GLS. And the typical example of this is hypertroph uh, hypertrophy um, HCM, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. In this case, typically, uh, the pathological hypertrophy uh, is related with a paradoxically normal ejection fraction but a severely reduced GLS. Another application of GLS could be related to infiltrative cardiomyopathy such as amyloidosis. In patients with amyloidosis, GLS could have a typical pattern which has an apical sparing, so the sparing of the apex, whereas there is a reduction in the mid to basal segments. So the typical pattern is the apical sparing. Moreover, another application of GLS could be uh, the valvulopathies, in particular the uh, severe aortic stenosis in patients with no symptoms, in which the reduction of GLS could be related to the rapid onset of symptoms and a bad or worse prognosis. 
Moreover, uh, in patients with uh, mitral regurgitation, severe mitral regurgitation, uh, worse uh, values of GLS are um, linked to the onset of uh, left ventricular systolic dysfunction after mitral valve surgery. Finally, obviously, the most important application of GLS is cardio oncology. In fact, GLS has been reported to be earlier in the detection of left ventricular dysfunction in patients undergoing uh, chemotherapic drugs. So for this reason, we should evaluate all the patients with, uh, that undergo uh, chemotherapic drugs together with ejection fraction and uh, GLS because an, um, a reduction of GLS of more than 15% in a relative percentage has been related to an earlier dysfunction. So in that case, we should start earlier cardioprotective drugs, such as beta blockers or ACE inhibitors. So in conclusion, global longitudinal strain is an important parameter which reflects the deformation of the left ventricle in the longitudinal direction and it is uh, earlier than ejection fraction in the detection of left ventricular systolic dysfunction. 